Hey, it's Big Extra Plug, the biggest stepper. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. All right, y'all. So we finally got Big X, the plug, up in here. How are mm -hmm. you feeling? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You're so damn humble. Like, you are really humble. I'm chilling. <laughs> chill. Now, you know I got to give you your flowers because your Big Steppers EP charted on Apple Music Charts, and that's major as hell. So how are you feeling in this moment right now? Man, I don't know. I'm kind of like in shock. I just found out last night. You know, I'm, you know, it's building. It's building. I ain't really just. I don't know. We just been working so much. I ain't been able to just. You know what I'm saying? But I'm pretty sure when I get in the shower tonight, I'm gonna cry some shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I ain't gonna cry. <laughs> nah, it's gonna it's it's gonna hit me then. Now, in your earlier days, when you were really just getting into the rap and like taking your career serious, did you ever think you would be in this moment that you are in now? Yes, ma'am. Cause whatever I do, I put my mind like, whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. So I knew when I started rapping that I was gonna do whatever I could to be the best at it. And this, this is part of being the best. This stage mm -hmm. is part of being the best. So I knew I was gonna eventually sit on these steps. For sure. Did you manifest everything? Manifest? I ain't, I'm I take everything day by day. Right. I, I found out a long time ago, you can't think two weeks, three weeks ahead, because then it's going to that fuck up your mental, because then in two, three weeks, if where you want to be, ain't, you ain't there. Now you fucked up about it, now you're discouraged. So I take it day by day. OK, I want to be the best I can be today. Go out, be the best I am that day. When you go to sleep, all right, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Anyway, go say the same thing. Wow, you low-key just spoke to me because I'm always worried about the future. So, like, when I think, I'm always thinking about, like, the years to come, mm -hmm. but never really living in the present moment. Can't do that. You can't say, I'm going to find my man in 10 years because then in three <laughs> days you might go to the club and the man of your dreams might be in there. Okay, you, uh, all right now, you preached a little <laughs> bit too much. <laughs> no, but before we get into your career, I do want to get into your background because we know mm -hmm. you're from Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. Now, what part of Dallas, Texas are you from? I'm from Pleasant Grove. Okay. But so I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm putting on for my whole city. I'm not just putting on for my, my section know what it is, but I'm putting on for my whole city. Dallas, Texas, you know what I'm saying? So I'm putting on for my city and then Texas. And then we're going from there. So what would you, well, ha actually, how would you describe your upbringing in Dallas? So like, my pops would say all the time, oh, you stayed with me more growing up. But as far as I remember from, from what I can remember till nine years old, I stayed with my mama. And my mama did what she had to do to, you know what I'm saying, to survive. And so she didn't really have the resources to not have me in that environment, you know what I'm saying? So. You know what I'm saying? It was, I ain't gonna say it was rough because my mama was doing what she was doing, so I, I ate good, had my best, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna say it was rough. It was actually fun. You know what I'm saying? But then when I moved with my pops, because I was just so bad at nine years old. <laughs> what was you getting into at nine? Man, I was, I was stealing. It's just what, what a normal nine year old would do times 10. You know what I'm saying? Time so team. was your mom like, okay, you finna go leave with your dad? She literally told me to get in the car. This is after she told me to get in the car and then drove me to the juvenile place and said, get out. And I said, no. <laughs> this was after that. So like a couple weeks after that, she drove me all the way to Commerce, Texas. I didn't know where I was going. She just packed all my stuff, drove all the way to Commerce, Texas. She said, go knock on that door. Take your bags, go knock on that door. I went and got my bags, went and knocked on that door. I turned around, she was gone. Then I turned back around because the door opened and it was a big six foot eight man, my pops. He just bust out crying. Cause you know what I'm saying? He had just got out, he ain't had nothing, he ain't had nothing in that apartment with an air mattress. My mama, I just had did so much that my mama couldn't take it. So I understood. And then my pops was crying because he ain't had nothing. He was starting all over. So I understood both sides. But when I moved with pops, it was a different ball game. <laughs> okay, did you have a little bit more freedom when you was with your dad? No. Oh. I had more freedom when I was in T. Jones, you know what I'm saying? Pops, he was strict by the hill because he, he already knew what path I was going down and he knew what he had done. And he always told me, 
you'll never be like me. You know what I'm saying? You'll never be like me. And so he he held me to that. You know what I'm saying? I was a football player. No, I couldn't have a I couldn't have a, a B, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of parent my pops was. I got whoopings, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, how, that's the type of thing my pops was. So, then, you know what I'm saying? I, I was straight, you know what I'm saying? I, like, right. I still, when I go to school, I was still the class clown, you know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, woo. But I knew that them grades better been right, and I know, you know what I'm saying, I better do what I got to do at the crib because I ain't trying to deal with pops. So, you know what I'm saying? It was straight, though. But then, 16, me and pops had some disagreements, I started smelling myself, you know what I'm saying, he kicked me out. He kicked me out, I moved to my granny crib in, in North Dallas, and then she moved out into her own apartment and kept me in the, I stayed in the duplex so I could finish school. Cause when he kicked me out, like I, I always been the youngest in my grade, so mm -hmm. like when I was a senior, like going into senior, I was only 16 years old. So like, I graduated when I was 17 type deal. So like, like I said, 16, we were going into the senior year, boom, I'm 17. I'm 17 in a three bedroom duplex by myself. Like, so I finished my high school career by myself. Wow. It's crazy, right? Did you, were you ever stressed out with having to nope, do that? Nope, I had a hell of a time. <laughs> I ain't got a lot to tell you. Barely graduated, but I had a hell of a time. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. But we made it happen. We graduated, you know what I'm saying? I, I never changed nothing that happened because I probably wouldn't be here. So, but yeah, my, uh, the original question was what, my upbringing? Yeah, it seemed like you, you know had saying? fun. I, I, I did have fun, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was some good, it was some bad, but we're here. Now, what would you say was a major life lesson for you growing up? A major life lesson? I don't know, man, you just can't trust nobody. Because all the incidents that I done seen my pops or my teacher was in was just them trusting people. Four, five years old, somebody, my mama let the person in the house and he tried to rob my mama and the nigga that she was with at the time. If it wasn't for the nigga that she was with at the time, we probably would have all been dead. Cause I'm sitting there watching cartoons. He tried to rob him. Like I said, my mama was doing what she was doing. You know what I'm saying? He tried to rob her. She picked me up, take me, put me in the closet, come back 10 seconds later, pick me up, go in there and shoot at both of them. You know what I'm saying? So. That's just because she was trusting, you know what I'm saying, trusting people. Wow. I don't watch Pops lose so much money just trusting niggas, just fucking with niggas, thinking that niggas was cool. So shit, that's, I'm, and I'm real big on that too. Trust, shit, I, if I can, if I can trust you, I don't give a, shit, we good. We good, I, I'm real big on trusting. That's, I feel like that's the biggest thing I learned from my people. And speaking of trust, I meant to ask you in the beginning, but I know you got your people in the back with you on the porch, so go ahead and introduce them as well. Man, this is my manager, Boss Caillou. In other <laughs> words, Cal. Big inner circle shit. You know what I'm saying? This is my dog. Big dog. <laughs> also, big inner circle shit. It's just, uh, so inner circle, it's like, it's like a, they like a, a label management team, like, you know what I'm saying? They do a lot, it's a trick out of trades. But one of the things they do is, like I said, management. And so yeah, they, they, these my managers. When I, I had a previous manager in workout, I ain't gonna even speak on them. But I reached out, I just post, made a post on Instagram. This was after I had already had a little buzz in my city and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I just posted, hey, I need a manager. And like 15 niggas hit me up. Like, no, I actually, one nigga hit me up on Instagram. I sent him my number and 15 niggas texted me. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm reading them messages. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah, I'm reading them and they all like, oh, what's up? This is such and such from Inner Circle. What's such such? I'm like, damn, they all from Inner Circle. I'm like, fuck it, let me just go up there. And when I went up there, this nigga was there. Shit, we chopped it up, listened to music and shit, and we just got to rolling from there. After a while, like, like I said, I was already having motion, so shit, it was shows and shit that I was just like, Shit, come on, like, just, you know what I'm saying? Come, he was already playing the manager role, and so she, once we finally was like, he was like, so, you wanna make me your manager? I was like, shit, nigga, I thought you already was. <laughs> I thought you already was. So shit, we, we just been locked in since then. Now, getting into the music early on, a story that you told from watching one of your interviews is that your dad was actually encouraging you, like, you need to rap when you were really young. Yeah. So talk to us about that. Man, I was like, I was probably like, it was anywhere between seven and nine. Cause like I said, my pops used to say all the time, oh, 
you you stayed with me a lot when you was growing up. But so like, it would be like, I would be so bad, my mama would just drop me off in the middle of the school year. And then I finish the school year and then he'll send me back for the summer and I just end up staying with my mama again. And so one of those times that I got dropped off <laughs> and went with him, damn, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, your dad telling you to rap early Okay, on. boom, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, boom. One of them times I went to stay with him, actually, no, I was nine. This was when she dropped me off, that last time. He had a he had a little spot in the apartments. And uh, one day we was just sitting there, and it was niggas in there. They was just freestyling and whatnot. He had a microphone in there and whatnot. They was just freestyling, and he was like, son, spit some shit. And I hopped on that motherfucker and went crazy. And he was like, Nigga, wait, I didn't know you could do that. Nigga, you need to rap. You need and how old were you? I was, I was nine. Nine, okay. I was nine, so I was like, nah, Pops, I'm a football player. I'm, fine. I'm a football <laughs> player. And so he was like, all right, that's what you say you want to do. And so he whooped my ass in that football shit. Like, I'm training. I, I, I'm, I was a football player. I went to college for it and everything. I was a football player because of that man, really. Because of that man. Well, yeah, so that was, that, that's that story. So when um, you were going to college for football, I mm -hmm. know that you didn't finish it out in Minnesota. Yeah. So did you have any discouragement when football didn't work out for you? I ain't gonna say I was discouraged because I had already lost the love. I, I lost the love for football. I was just doing it because that's what I was accustomed to. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that was the only way because like I, I had just started smoking weed. So like now weed helped me with a lot. Like I ain't gonna lie. Like I'm a high head. So when I smoke, it just keep me cool, calm, mm -hmm. and collected. But let me not smoke. This interview, I'd probably be so irritated. You know what I'm saying? Really? Man, what? It's like that. Like, I was on papers for three years. Anybody can tell you I was the worst person ever for those three years. Wait, why would you say you was the worst person ever? Because I was just always angry. I was always angry. That was what football helped me. Like, I, I just was always angry. So instead of beating people up in school, mm -hmm. I beat a nigga up on the field. Illegal, you know what I'm saying? Did you ever get down to like the root of your anger? Like, did you ever know what it really was that would make you so angry? Ain't no telling. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'm good. I'm good now, right? Yeah, like you saying that you're angry and I'm talking to you, you just so cool and chill. I'm like I'm a people's person. Like I, I ain't gonna say I know how to put on a show, but I know how to talk to people. I know how to, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing my pop taught me. No matter what you're going, nigga, you speak with your chest up, and your mm -hmm. head up. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. So it's just how I am. Now, with where you are at this point in your career, do you feel like you found your purpose, or do you feel like you're at least slowly getting to where you're finding your purpose? No, I definitely. This is definitely my. This is this is my calling. This is my calling. This is this is how I'm supposed to feed my son. Cause what I was doing wasn't nothing positive coming from it. So it's I don't see nothing better than this. That's it. And just to backpedal once again, um, another story that you told about how basically when rap came about for you. Um, using like solitary, solitary confinement mm -hmm. and you didn't have anything to do in there and you just... You know, I was in there going crazy, man. I'm talking about counting bricks on the walls type deal. Man, and so everybody else was having the best time of their life for some reason and I didn't understand it. So one day I just hollered out and said, why the fuck y'all so like, what the fuck is y'all doing that's keeping y'all sane to the point where that y'all can have conversations like y'all not in a fucking, you know what I'm saying, cement, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are y'all doing? And they like, I need you better, you better write a write a book, write about your story, write about your life. I'm like, I'm not finna write no book. I ain't even like writing in school. So they like, well, do some do some poetry. I'm like, come on, bro. We in jail. I'm not finna write no poetry. Well, you, you better rap something. And so I was like, I bet. And so boom, in my head, I thought about the Notorious movie mm -hmm. when he was scraping the shit off the walls. I was doing that. So I would do the shit and it would be hard. And then the next day when I, or whenever I would try to reread the shit, I couldn't read it. So I was like, what the fuck I do to get some paper? You know what I'm saying? Cause like, I was, like I said, I was so angry that whenever the COs would come, I'm talking shit, I'm talking cash money shit. 
I, I didn't know why I was just talking to Gabe Mitchell. I was mad. Why you, why the fuck you got me in here? You know what I'm saying? So they never wanted to do nothing for me. So they was like, just, just act like something wrong with you. Act like you got a migraine. Act like your head hurt, your stomach hurt. They're going to bring you a med line. So they used to bring me med lines. I used to fill out, just write on them. I would just write top part, and then I write one right here. You know what I'm saying? I would just make it work. I use that paper for about two days, give them another one. And so that's, that's really where the where the rapping just came from. I guess that's where I kind of built my craft at, right. I guess you could say. Would you say that it took for that moment for you to even be placed in there to realize like, dang, this is something that I might end up doing for real? Uh, no, 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 no. I still didn't realize that until after. I was just doing like I was just doing that in there really just to pass time. Mm-hmm. Like I seen in there that I was all right at it. I was like, oh, you all right at this? You know, what I'm saying? good. But I ain't, I still didn't think it was gonna be what I did for the rest of my life. Right. You know what I'm saying I just knew when I got out, I wanted to do something positive, make revenue to feed my child. Cause I missed his I missed his first birthday being like that's why I was in solitary. I, the day of his birthday, got out for the video call, went crazy. I went crazy. I was just so upset. And so they put me in solitary. So, yeah, I know. that's how they go, man. So what would you say it took for you to actually go all in with the rap? Like I said, I needed something positive to do. Uh-huh. I knew I couldn't work for nobody. I, I hate, I, I just hate people, I ain't gonna say telling me what to do, cause like I said, I played football all my life, so I'm used to that. But it's just like, Somebody, I can be making more money than you. I can be doing the same thing you're doing. So why would I work for you? Nah, I'm finna go do something where I can make my own revenue. And if it wasn't this, I would have, I would have went and drove trucks until I had enough money to buy my own truck and not had a truck. It would have been something though, you know what I'm saying? I would have did something to feed my child. Mm-hmm. This was just, I had a partner that was already doing this. And so he was like, just do it. You know what I'm saying? You got a little bread, do it. And so I did it. <laughs> we here. How much money would you say you invested into yourself starting out? Before, like, UM reached out to me? Or like before? I would say just, before they reached out to you. Probably like, realistically, not that much. I ain't gonna lie. Not that much. It happened quick. I say, because at first I was getting the studio sessions for like $25 in my partner's closet. So I, and I ain't, and I was the type of person, like, I write. So I have all my stuff I already wrote. So when I go in there, I'm only paying for one hour. Mm-hmm. And I'm, because when I go in the studio, the, the lay down process is like 15, 20, 30 minutes. That ain't no problem. So I was only spending like $25, $50. And then, boom. I started getting a little momentum. I was on like, well, I ain't gonna say never mind. I had got a little motion, got a little bread, so then boom, I upgraded studios. No, what it was was, I, like I said, I was making music out of my partner closet. Mm-hmm. And uh, the mother of my child's cousin, named Al, he, uh, he was a real big name in Dallas. He was at this club. He was like, man, come perform at this club. He was, he was messing with my music. So we go all the way to the club and he drunk. So we get there, we like, what's up? He like, man, they say y'all can't even perform, but I'm gonna take y'all to the studio, man. Rick Ross be going there, ooh. I'm like, man, hi, right, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, man, this better pay out. So boom, he take us to Never Satisfied Studios, Radio Raheem, I don't know if you ever heard of him. But uh, took us to the studio, we clicked up with them. I came back the next day, they was like, oh, for you, we'll do, we'll do 60. 50. Well, I think it was 50. Yeah, we'll do 50 for the first time. I paid for one hour, I did two songs, they sounded lovely. I dropped them songs. People was messing with it. Uh, I spent probably like another hundred. I spent fifty dollars on the music review. I'm, I I ain't spent over before you even hit me up. I ain't spent over five thousand dollars. Really? No cap. I ain't spent over five thousand dollars. Like as I'm listening to you talk, even going back to your dad telling you that you know you need to be rapping at an early age, mm-hmm. and just the different situations that you've been through. When I say this shit was set in stone for you, like this shit was like it was written. I was always, I was always like, like I said, I was the class, I was a popular kid. So you know what I'm saying? I always in any room, I was, I'm a shine. Even if I, even if I wasn't a rapper, 
whatever I was, I always stuck out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like that's why now you say like I'm humble. It's cause I'm. It's like I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm not gonna say I'm built for it, but I've been used to this light. When I was a football player, this same light. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just. I don't know, man. I'm taking it a day at a time. I'm just grateful that it's happening the way it's happening. Like I said, I take every day, day by day. I celebrated yesterday, yesterday. Now I'm gonna celebrate everything I did today, tonight. And mm -hmm. then tomorrow, whatever we do, I'm gonna celebrate that, that night. That's how we do it. That's how I do it. And when it came to marketing yourself, I do know that you were submitting your music in for the music reviews. Uh -huh. So how did that end up working out for you? That's how you and found me. That's how Aaron Hunter found me. I uh, posted, like I said, I did the music review, went crazy on it. I won the video, pulled up to the video, didn't even shoot the song that I won because I had already won another little review and they was already shooting that video. We was already shooting that video. So shot that video. He was like, man, you hard. Boom, won another review, won another review. He told me I couldn't win them no more. He got, <laughs> half I got to shoot my videos free after that though. He was like, you can't win no more, but I'm going to bless your game. $2,000 videos for free now? Man, but somewhere through them, Three videos that I dropped on his channel, Aaron Hunter from UM reached out to me. Him, yeah. he reached out, I ignored it, because at the time it was like, everybody was like sending the little scam shits. Everybody was fake A&Rs and shit like that. And so I just, I just didn't look at it. And another person reached out from UM, I just didn't acknowledge it. Then Aaron went to the UM page and was like, hey, this is Aaron from UM, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, for sure, we got to chop it up. And then he was like, all right, I'm flying down there. I'm like, all right, for sure. He flew down here. I'm like, well, shit, I didn't really think he was gonna fly down here. Uh, I got some, like, I got family stuff to do. I got a little cousin, cousin birthday party. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going. I'm like, all right, for sure. We had Chuck E. Cheese. He had, he had <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese with us, you know what I'm saying? And so that's really what made me just, that's what drew me to UM. It's just been going crazy ever since, man. Where do you feel like you make the best music? You wanna be honest? Yes. On the toilet. I wake up in the, like, I wake up in the morning, I roll the wood, get on the toilet. Well, I turn the shower on and get on the toilet. Oh, that is mad. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we. I'm for real. That's where the magic happens. <laughs> Straight up. No cap. I ain't been doing it lately because, like, they've been telling you know I've been having to do it at the studio or whatnot. So, but Mr. Trouble, Big Stepper, Feeling Like Dennis, all the classics. On the that came that, that commode. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just gotta ask, no like, care. what is it about, you know, sitting down on the toilet that just really allows you to get in the zone? I don't know, I guess when the legs go numb and make the brain work. <laughs> oh my god. Like, no, I, no, I'm, no. Trying, I'm trying not to laugh so hard because I got the mic on, but like, I dead ass with the fall. <laughs> no, no, no. No funny shit. No, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's like, I be, because like anytime I, anytime I can use the bathroom, I always lock the door. So it's like, I, I be feeling, mm -hmm. I get safe, comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of times, so like, when I get in trouble back in the day, my pops would put me on punishment, no TV, no nothing. Go to the bathroom. And just think, ponder, you know what I'm saying? Mine go crazy. It just works. I don't know if it works, <laughs> but I ain't did it in a minute, but I might need to write an album in the bathroom. You can just pad it up, you know what I'm saying? Put a little, a little mattress in there. Now, I do want to ask, shit. you know, coming from Dallas, and just to keep it completely transparent, there's not too many that make it to the point that you are now. Yeah. So I guess I want to ask you, do you 
feel like you're, do you feel the pressure to like kick down doors for the city of Dallas? For sure. For sure. I want to be the first. I mean, it's a, it's, Yellow Beasy, you know what I'm saying? He did, he did what he did. Uh, OG Bobby Billions, my three got to where he was. But I'm trying to like, I'm trying to, I'm not even trying to be like no legend of Dallas. Like I'm trying to be uh, just a legend period. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. So when, whenever, whenever somebody say Lil Wayne name, I want to be the, like, I ain't gonna say the next name after that, but I want to be two, three names below that. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's, that's just the type of person I am. I want to be the best at whatever. No, but I do want to ask you, like, what does music truly mean to you? Now it means a lot because it's how I feed my son. I, I never wanted to be no rapper before this. I never, I, I, I liked music, but I ain't just, I had a partner named Ro. Mm -hmm. This nigga literally, like, while we was at parks hollering at females, mm -hmm. he was standing at the top of the slide pretending like he was rapping to a crowd. I ain't never did that. I was running through the field, acting like I'm, you know what I'm saying, crossing people over and take. So I ain't never, I ain't gonna say I just, like my love came from, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing like that. It's just something that I just happened to be good at that fed my son. So, and I, now I do it. I invest the money in it. I want to be the best at it. That's it. What would you say is like a major risk that you've had to take so far with your career? Like traveling and just being in the studio all the time. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't, like, my biggest thing to me is my son. You know what I'm saying? I've already been away from him for a little minute before. And so I, I told him, you'll never have to worry about that being gone, being gone, you know what I'm saying, no more. So like now, when I be in the studio for hours on top of hours and not getting home till he sleep or, you know what I'm saying? That's like one of the biggest regrets right now. But once he get a little older, he gonna be everywhere I'm at, so he gonna be good. Now, I gotta ask you, who are some major artists that you wanna work with? Rod Wave. Uh, mm, Money Bag. What do you say? Drake. You want to work with Drake? Man, what? That's, I love that's an easy okay. couple M's. Thank you. They be trying to. They be trying to do my my <coughs> guy, man. If, if you don't do it, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to do a song with Drake, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you and your pockets, <laughs> for sure. For you sure. think you got? You think? Okay, so say Drake called you and he like, I want you to hop on this house. <coughs> you think this what? What if he calls you and he's like, I want you to hop on this house music track. You think you could jump on the vibes? I can do whatever Drake need me to do. <laughs> Drake, I can do whatever you need me to do. <laughs> I really, I'm really curious to know, can you sing? I can carry a note, if that makes sense. It does. I can carry a note, but I can't change the levels and shit. I ain't code like that. <laughs> okay, like so that. we gotta get into your Big Steppers EP. Talk to us about what this project, well, what this body of work means to you. Really, it's like, it mean, I ain't gonna lie, it mean a lot. Just off the strength of, it's like my, it's like my first real body of work since I just really just been rapping, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, for all the people who hadn't already tuned in, it's like, now it's all on one plate. You know what I'm saying? Eat, here, here you go. You know what I'm saying? It's, I don't know, it's hard. And then we charted, the, it's not even an album. You know what I'm saying? And we charted, that's, that's hard. That's hard. I mean, yeah, that mean I ain't a song on that motherfucker got skipped. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm fucking with that, I ain't gonna lie. That shit is crazy. Like when I went on your page and I saw that, I was like, damn. And it ain't even been, at that time, it hadn't even been out five days. Well, I think that was the fifth day. What was that, the fourth day? That was the fourth day we was charting. Listen. All I can say is, niggas in my city ain't doing that. <laughs> niggas in my city ain't doing that. So I feel like, like I said, 
you name a top five in the city and don't mention me, then he playing with his nose. Cause I'm for sure top five in my city. I feel like I'm top five in Texas right now. What's going on on this end? And you say what? And we independent, you hear me? Hey. Dang, do you think you're gonna ever sign to a major or? I ain't gonna lie. And <laughs> <laughs> toes got the twin lips. <laughs> this is what I've been waiting on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking about it just because I felt like, I felt like I've been taking this as like platforms. You know what I'm saying? And so I started to know, you know what I'm saying? I started out the mud. Then boom, I, I, took, I took advantage of Half Pints platform. Then, you know what I'm saying, after that, you know, it just, then UM came and I've been taking advantage of their platform. So I just feel like if I was to go to that next level, I would be able to conquer that platform as well. But due to the fact that I just charted, mm -hmm. like, like, like I just charted as an independent artist, like, we ain't even just, like, we just now starting to just get the train rolling. And so, like, the fact that we charted the first EP, I feel like Dolph. <laughs> I feel like motherfucking As you Dolph. Should. Like this so is. I, and it, it kind of just showed me that like I make I make I make quite a quite a quite a little bit of Travada off of rap. You know what I'm saying? And so it made me feel like I could just stay independent and just keep getting out of this shit. Like why sign to a major and let them have some shit that you're doing. But then it's like at the same time, I got people I gotta feed. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, and it's not just me. I got, normally I have 50, see I'm saying a number on the head. 15 niggas, this is 15 niggas that's gonna be with me. And them niggas done did so much for me, risked so much for me, spent so much for me. I gotta pay them niggas back. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they, they mamas my mamas, so. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I think about. That's what I'm thinking about right now. I, every, everywhere we done went, any trip we go on, it be me and him. But I always make sure I FaceTime them boys. You know what I'm saying? They, everywhere I go, they, they there. Like, right. it's, it's niggas on the way right now. You know what I'm saying? Niggas upset they missed their flight today. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I got people I got to take care of. I got a mama, I got granny. You know what I'm saying? I got people I got to feed. So it's like, if we can keep going, how, I don't know, man. I, it's just hard. It's like, it's it's hard right now. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, but I, I don't I don't thought about it. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I don't thought about it for sure. For sure. I think the thing that really draws me to you as an artist is the way that you're actually like a lyricist for real. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a game. That, that's because I be talking about shit. These niggas, you niggas, these niggas don't be talking about shit. I ain't gonna talk to y'all. I'm just gonna. These <laughs> niggas don't be talking about shit. They just be talking about. Like, I really. I ain't gonna lie. I be talking about shit that I really done did. So, you know what I'm saying? The niggas know that. And if a nigga don't know that, they can, you know what I'm saying, see me and hear me and can tell. That nigga done, you know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't talking about. He talking about some shit. You know what I'm saying? But these niggas don't be talking about shit. These niggas just be rhyming. I feel like I'm the first person in a minute that done knew how to pick a beat, put some words together, rhyme, just make that shit sound amazing in a minute. It just flows together, man. It, it really it's you make it seem easy. Really what it is, is I I pinpoint soul. Niggas not doing that no more. When you say pinpoint pinpoint soul, what do you mean? I make music that make a gangster go. Oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't do this no more. Niggas, niggas is too busy. I'm making niggas, you know what I'm saying? I'm making niggas get, get jiggy, get groovy. Like, Dallas ain't had that since Young Nation now. Lil Ronnie now. And it's like, it's the, it's the gangster version of it. This the gangster version of jigging. I done made the gangster version of jigging, is what it sound like. But I ain't talking about no dancing shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, I, I make, like, I make, I make niggas have a good time. I make niggas not want to shoot up the party. 
Like, it make, it make them like, damn, I could shoot up this party, but this nigga going so crazy, I'm not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I just, I, I give off vibes. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Good vibes. Like, damn, he talking about some crazy shit, but I can vibe to this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't even pull my strap because, goddamn, I'm moving my hips too much. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, that's how it is. What type of impact would you say that you would want to leave on your listeners and just people who are take well, people who are watching you right now? Mm, just man, you know, you, you don't you, you you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever it is, you can do it. That's, that's just the mindset I had. Whatever, I seen whatever I was doing, I could do. Just do something positive. You can make money doing something positive. These folks like positive stuff. They used to like that negative stuff, but they like positive stuff. They like, they, just do it. <laughs> just do it, man. You know what I'm saying? Just do it. All right, so we got Big Steppers charting right now on Apple Music. What is next for you, and what can we expect this year? Man, this year, hopefully we can get this album out. Definitely got an album that's been brewing. Got a couple couple more hard singles on the way. But yeah, definitely that album. That album is really was because, like, this EP was really just a, a mixture of songs that was telling what I've done, you know what I'm saying? Like me now, well, at, at that point in time. But like the shit I've been making is like me as a rapper, like me having that shit now, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I have money, legal, legally, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I can talk about how I can go to the, to the mall and not even look at the tags. And, but now, now it's time to show that I can talk, like now, now that I done showed I can talk about this gangster shit and still make you move your hips, now I'm finna talk about these rollies I'm finna be having and these big ass chains me and the gang finna be having and still make you move your hips at the same time. Ooh. As long as you're moving your hips. I like how you're thinking already to change the subject. Mm-hmm. You know, most people don't think to change the subject or like even switch it up. And this is finna be your like debut first album. And you already thinking about, all right, it's, it's enough of that. It's time to move on. I talk, I talk about what's going on like what I'm doing at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I made all the songs that y'all are hearing now, I was doing shit. I, I, I had just did some shit. So that's what I was talking about. Now, I don't remember go to the studio shop, hit the club, go crazy, smoke the best green, and live my life. That's what we finna talk about. We finna go crazy with I know that's right. <laughs> Now, before we wrap up, do you have any last words or shout outs? Shout out the whole 600. Shout out the whole TSABB. Shout out my mama, my pops, my son, all the fans, UM. Man, just everybody that's just been riding with me, man. Dirty Glove, off the porch. We on the porch. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna be off the porch. Yeah, man. That's it, man. Hey, big X, big stepper. Could I my bitch, she was being too extra. I saw my line screaming how they gon' stretch, but they stay in their place because this shit is.